hairstylist discovers why a girl won't let her brush her hair. Clara, a hairstylist of four years standing, thought she had seen it all in her line of work until meeting Amelia. She smiled as she greeted her, knowing that she now had another head full of unruly hair to tame. She started listening to her narrative and realized she may have taken on more than she could handle. Clara's talent for making others happy with her appearance and hairdressing led her to begin working in the industry even before she graduated from high school. The truth is, she was capable of doing that very thing. When she was a college senior looking to make some extra cash, she began working at her aunt's beauty shop. Though she was certain that she wanted to make hairdressing her career, she had no clue of the radical change it would bring about in her circumstances. About two years later, Clara got a job as a hairdresser in her hometown, where she rapidly rose to prominence as a top stylist. Clara's career was forever altered by Amelia, who came from out of town to present her with an award and inspire her audience. Clara was shocked at the tangled mess that awaited her at the salon today. Something like this had never appeared in her life. Years of neglect had left their mark on Lucy's hair, but that wasn't the worst issue. Her hair was hiding something much more disturbing. Shortly through Clara's haircut, the revelation that lay under the loosened lock sent her to her knees for the better part of an hour. Emilia had no option but to get up from her barber chair and escape when the cops came, but the caller had no choice but to alert the authorities. For Clara and her co-workers, that particular Saturday was very hectic. Each hairstylist was booked solid for the whole weekend at the salon. Although Clara observed a teenage girl looking in through the windows as she was finishing up with one of her regulars, she didn't pay her any thought since many others did the same. The girl's actions, however, caused Clara to abandon her brush. A female wearing baggy grey sweatpants and a hooded sweatshirt entered the salon. She looked around the room with her blue eyes darting from person to person, her hood up and her fingers twitching. There was obvious anxiety on her face, and Clara could sense it. She put down the clippers and smiled at the girl, but the young lady spun around and stormed out of the store. With her excuse me to her client's ear, Bethany Clara made her way out of the crowded salon and into the street. She yelled, hey, y'all. Nearly beyond the Alex, the girl looked back. Clara saw that the young woman eventually stopped circling. Her eyes widened and her lips quiver, showing signs of dread. Aside from Clara, she turned away pleadingly. Again, Clara curled her lips. If the girl was okay, she had to know it. Hey, what's your name? When the girl returned to Clara, Clara inquired about what she had been doing, and the girl murmured something about Amelia. Want to come in? This was her inquiry. In addition to the fantastic tales, we have milkshakes. Clara could sense that the girl's anxiety was still there even after she nodded and entered the store. As they made their way through the salon, Clara asked the girl why she'd run away, and when she removed her hood, she understood. Lose the fat. As Clara examined the young woman's locks, she made the following remark. Why do you want me to cut it when hair was matted and sloppy with thick lumps that hadn't been combed in a long time? Aware that she would need the rest of the day free, Clara inquired whether she could do it. As the young lady put it, because it's useless. I have no value whatsoever. She felt tears welling in her eyes and begged you to end it. Please, Clara reassured them, take it easy. As she went through the process of combing her hair with the comb we chose to use, a genuine grin escaped her lips. In a pinch, we can always call in the clippers. The young woman regarded her with interest but did not respond to why do you care. Clara's heart broke in two as she uttered her question. The truth that Amelia had through horrible trials in her life and lost all she had was something the girl revealed, but no one ever seemed to care. Her mother's death when she was a youngster set off a chain of events that continues to this day. Her feelings of abandonment and insignificance were so overwhelming that she couldn't even muster the will to brush her hair. Because Amelia didn't take good care of herself, and her dad couldn't afford to. Kids began picking on her at school, calling her horrible names, and teasing her to the point that Amelia would often return home from school in tears. There was never a day when I didn't dread having to go to class. 
To put it bluntly, it was the worst possible location for me to be. Emilia informed Clara that as a child, when everyone else was having fun and making friends, I was usually sitting in a corner by myself, having no one to play with. After the loss of Lucy's mother, Lucy's father took to drinking heavily. He'd be completely wasted and unable to communicate with Emilia by the time she arrived home from school. Since she was all alone, Emilia never received any kind of consistent care or even occasional assistance. She accomplished it all by herself. I was 12 years old. Even though she wasn't a typical preteen, she was legally an adult. She handled all the housework, cooking, cleaning, and preventing her alcoholic father from killing himself. Hearing sad stories brought tears to Clara's eyes. Concerned about how a young lady might be trusted with her beliefs without someone checking up on her. Having little conception of suffering, she understood that Emilia's experience had left an indelible mark on her character. Curiously, the worst of it wasn't even her young age. Growing up, Emilia saw how much assistance her dad really needed. Because of his condition, she decided she could no longer care for him and had him admitted to a treatment facility. It did, however, mean that Emilia was finally left to her own devices. Emilia's father's improvement at the rehabilitation facility gave her new reason to have faith in the future. Being an adult of 18 years, she began caring more about her health. She even frequented nightlife hotspots in search of romantic fulfillment, and it wasn't long before she found the one. She was out one night when she met Alex, and their relationship moved at a breakneck pace from there. Within four months, Alex asked Emilia to marry him, and she became pregnant soon after. It was light at last, after all the shadows that seemed to follow her throughout her whole existence. Things were looking well, but then something happened that triggered Emilia's severe sadness all over again. Every month, Emilia and her husband would visit the hospital to make sure their baby was developing normally. After a few months, an ultrasound confirmed that they were having a boy, and although Emilia was overjoyed by the news, she soon realized that the scan had revealed some less than reassuring details. Emilia was cautioned by the obstetrician to avoid any rapid movement since the baby was resting in an unusual position. Emilia didn't want to take any chances with her unborn child, so she informed Clara that she was taking early maternity leave from her job because she was afraid of being arrested. After hearing her tragic backstory, Clara decided to cancel all of her weekend appointments and squeeze in some work with her co-workers. She spent the day sitting with the child, brushing and cleaning with her, but nothing she did could keep the kid from cutting her hair. By the time Clara flipped the child around in front of the mirror at the end of the day, they had successfully wrangled the girl's hitherto unmanageable mass of matted curls into a single knotted clump. The girls broke into their day's first grin but Clara realized there was still much to accomplish. She returned the girl's grin and politely inquired if she may come back the following day. Clara didn't often open the salon on Sundays, but she wanted to make an exception for this client. As she opened the door, she saw herself reflected in it and suddenly became certain that the girl would appear. She greeted the young lady with a cheery come in, guiding her into the salon. Do you think she'd be happy if she'd changed into a dress instead of sweats and a sweatshirt and let her black hair down? Clara would learn where the girl left off, so she would inquire about the length and style preferences of the girl's hair. Clara felt the girl was intriguing and great to chat to despite her reluctance to open up. Clara enjoyed working with her companion and considered her to be wonderful until she encountered an issue. The major clumps and matted sections of her hair had been restored but there was still significant damage close to the scalp. As Clara scowled, she pondered her next move. Clara was concerned that the girl may regress to her previous state of depression and hopelessness if she indicated that she had instead come up with a plan, despite the fact that they had made so much progress. Clara realized she needed to purchase time to ensure she could think of a better plan. She may get suspicious of the girl if she spent too much time staring at her head. As Clara's thoughts turned to methods to drag out the situation, her mind began to race. Even though she had a plan, she was afraid that if she couldn't find a solution, she would have to resort to cutting. 
Clara's consumers realized she provided them with something more valuable than just a good hairstyle, and that helped her become successful in her chosen field. Clara found that the extra services she provided came easily while working with her elderly clientele. A difficult scenario was presented, however, due to the girl's problems and the burden she bore. Clara sincerely wanted to assist the girl and believed they might find more in common if she could only get the girl to open up a bit. Because of her history of nervousness, Clara was wary about getting too close. She took a few deep breaths and started asking her questions to see what would happen. It was clear that, for someone so young, she was carrying a great deal on her shoulders, and Clara was eager to discover more about her. Clara felt terrible thinking about the poor girl suffering through everything that she was. Clara's desire to aid her went beyond just being a good Samaritan. Right then and there, Clara decided to shift gears. Clara opted to share some of her story rather than pressuring the girl to open up and maybe making her feel awkward. Clara utilized the time the girl was listening to her sad childhood story to come up with a plan for how to fix her hair. Clara saw that the remaining matted tufts of hair were too little and fragile to remove without causing the girl pain. On the other hand, if she lets them, they will eventually grow out and tangle her hair once again. Clara recognized that if she carefully applied a relaxer treatment to particular sections, it would disentangle the hair for her. Clara knew it wouldn't be easy, but she kept the girl talking and carried out her plan with the precision of a surgeon. Because Clara was so skilled, she was able to apply the relaxer without spilling any on the girl scout. She let it rest and waited expectantly till she saw that it was starting to take effect. Clara was alarmed by the sight of his scalp hanging free, though. Feeling confused and unsure about what to do. Clara fabricated an alibi for escaping to the rear, out of Amelia's line of sight. She sprinted to the rear, grabbed out her phone, and dialed 911. Clara knew there was no other option, but she did not have the courage to consider any alternative course of action. After moving back in with Amelia, Clara said she needed more of the back relaxer. Amelia had not been this relaxed in a long time, she even managed a sporadic grin. Minutes afterwards, Lucy's demeanor altered noticeably when she heard distant sirens, something she hadn't done in years. When Amelia's anxiety levels rose, she became visibly unhappy in the barber chair. At every available opportunity, she scanned the area and her gaze never left the hair salon's front door. As much as Clara tried, she just couldn't get her to relax. Hearing the approaching sirens, Amelia bolted for the salon's rear exit as a police vehicle pulled up. It was too much for Clara to take in at once. She was only trying to assist Amelia and hadn't bargained for the severity of the issue. Clara gave chase, but by the time she reached the rear exit, Amelia was already out of sight. The magnitude of Lucia's secret must be beyond Clara's wildest imaginings. Once back at the salon, Clara briefed the policeman on the scenario, and they recognized the gravity of the issue. So that whomever did this to Amelia would not get away with it, the police quickly returned to their vehicle and began patrolling in the direction Clara had seen Amelia escape. The way Amelia appeared, including the blue dress she was wearing, was described. No way could she have gone so far in such a short amount of time, especially after the police had strategically combed every street in the area. Since they realized things would only become worse for Amelia if they didn't locate her, they were insistent about making the search a priority. They needed to locate her before things got significantly worse because she couldn't keep going on like this. However, when the sun set and darkness fell, Amelia was nowhere to be seen. From what the police learned from Amelia's conversation with Clara, they realized that Amelia's only safe haven was with her husband. In the course of a normal search, they found her husband, Alex, at the given residence. According to what Alex told the police, he last saw Amelia yesterday. It was very baffling to him as to where she might be. The police officer had a bad feeling about Alex but couldn't quite put his finger on it. A police officer later that day still had concerns about Alex's behavior, so they maintained watching the neighborhood in case they bumped across her. They decided to go back to Amelia's old house, but he didn't seem to care that she had vanished. They noticed a strange ticking sound as they approached the house's front door, 
as if someone were tapping steadily on a window. Alex was upset because the police had returned to his residence. He wasn't happy about it and demanded that the police get a warrant before returning. With reluctance, the cops turned back toward their vehicle, but then something unexpected occurred. When the cops got back into their vehicle, they heard the identical ticking sound they had heard before, and they wondered whether they might find its source. It was then that they began their search of the dwelling. When the police, after almost completing a complete round, saw something that sent chills down their spines, they knew they were in the correct place. There was no room for question, the police knocked on Alex's door once again, waiting for him to answer. Each cop had a hand on his or her weapon holster. A lady in distress could be seen via the basement window on the left side of the home, where the ticking sound had originated a minute earlier. Indeed, Amelia was the only possible choice. After cops had dragged Alex from the home and handcuffed him to a patio girder, they unlocked the door and assigned one of them to keep watch. A second cop made a beeline for the basement and rescued the hiding lady. It was revealed to be Amelia, after all. Why did they lock her up in the cellar? and what did she do to deserve such treatment? At the police station, Alex and Emilia revealed that Emilia had been a victim of domestic violence for years. Alex, her husband, assaulted Emilia both psychologically and physically because he demanded complete control of their interactions. That's partly why Emilia started giving in to temptation once again. Earlier that year, Alex didn't allow Emilia a chance to take care of herself, so she was forced to do what he wanted. Alex's assault led to a miscarriage for Emilia. Emilia repeated her tale to the police that she had told Clara, but this time she explained why the infant was positioned so peculiarly. She lied to Alex the day before and the day before that in order to sneak out of the home and pay a visit to Clara at the salon. Clara quickly concluded that domestic violence was the source of the scars on her scalp. Though she had just intended to aid Emilia, why would she now run away? I didn't want to get myself into any more problems, so Amelia informed the police that I had come to terms with the fact that nothing would change for the better in my life, which was true. She had no idea that things were about to turn around for the better and that she would be able to rediscover the pleasure in her life at this time. A month later, Clara hired Amelia to assist out at the hair salon, and she also provided Amelia with a place to reside. Finally, after all of Amelia's trials, she got a ray of hope when Alex was arrested for abuse and liberty deprivation and sentenced to 25 years in jail.